But really, the agenda is subjugating the masses of humanity to facilitate the power and wealth of uh, uh, an elite class. And, Corporations. You know, yeah, capitalist, man. Imperialist fucking capitalist. That's exactly it. And, I, you know, it sounds so 1920s, 1930s, 19... 19- 1920s, 2000s, conspiracy theory, bullshit, whatever, right? But dude, it's fucking true. I just said they check every box on the fascism checklist. This is pure and simple corporate capitalistic fucking fascism. And then, so, okay, look, and that actually is a good setup. We're going to play this video right now. I made it um, last night. And um, it's really just kind of, um, I, I kind of um, vomited artistic expression onto YouTube, but it actually has some informative substance in it too. But it's, it's a little bit about sort of um, how the Christian coalition, it was at a central key figure in sort of facilitating what we now recognize as these Christo fascists and these alt-right, God hates fags type movement, right? Um, so, um, this video kind of sets it up, and um, and then we'll come back and we'll kind of um, break it down a little, little bit and discuss it a little better. Right, but but let's right. go ahead and play that. Reverend Aaron's artistic vomit. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's it this video is called it's Christian. Co- it's called Christian. It's called Christian Coalition um, Heresy of the Christo Fascists. Okay, yeah. let's check it out. Coalition Executive Director, Ralph Reed. We felt that with the roughly 1,900,000 households that Pat Robertson came out of his presidential campaign with on computer tape, about 175,000 of those identified as activists and prime donors, that there was a built-in base to build a new pro-family Christian organization in this country. The question is how we accomplish it, and that's where we get to this five-fold strategy. It's a five-fold strategy that if we execute this in the coming 10 years, we will be the most powerful political force in American politics. The first is a grassroots strategy. We're going to have the nation divided up into seven, seven state regions. And in each of those regions, we're going to have a full-time, paid, trained, professional regional director. They will be responsible for training activists in their region, interfacing with candidates at the local, state, and federal level, and mobilizing people at the grassroots. Each of those regional directors in each of those seven states will have 10 top counties, targets, where they have to organize down into the precincts by the next election. on the neck and go for the kill. Yes, we good Christians, we can do that too. When you get your opponent, when you start getting one little crap, one little weakness, you do not let up. At that point, you go for the juggler. What is the Christian Coalition? Is it a religious or a political organization? Well, it's a public issues organization um, organized under... Uh, that wasn't one of the choices I gave. Oh, you didn't do the public Well, it's, it's, it's a crossover. It does uh, uh, political things uh, from a religious uh, point of view. The purpose of creationism is to destroy the possibility of dispassionate, honest, intellectual, and scientific inquiry. It is, it is to make facts interchangeable with opinion. It is to make lies true. And that is a dangerous precedent to set because then you are allowed to view the world and the reality around you through this distorted ideological prism. That's what's being done. It's a war against truth. It's a war against uh, real intellectual inquiry. It's a war against science. Uh, and, and that, of course, is a fundamental component to the fascist state or the totalitarian state. Because in order for these movements to take power, they need a prolonged period of instability or crisis. And remember that there are tens of millions of people in the United States who've been completely disenfranchised with the flight of manufacturing jobs and, and, and have fallen into a level of despair. And these people, in their despair and their rage, have turned to a world where they're offered magic and angels and Jesus will walk with them, and they've been ripe for manipulation by these demagogues. 
you don't see anything wrong with, for example, picketing the funeral of an AIDS victim? Best time in the world to picket those creatures. That's when they're paying close attention to you. That's dying time is true time. They've been living lives based on lives. They died deaths based on lives. It's true. If you stand around their dead bodies and preach more lives. Good morning, I'm Barbara Brown. There's breaking news at this hour from Orlando where there are reports of a shooting at a nightclub in that city. Every side of my town. Every single one, you know, it's an unnatural shit. It's unnatural to want to be with someone of the same sex. Today, you know, people say, like, well, aren't you sad that 50 sodomites died? Here's the problem with that. It's like the equivalent of asking me, you know, what if you ask me, hey, are you sad that 50 pedophiles were killed today? Um, no, I think that's great. The good news is that there's 50 less pedophiles in this world because, you know, these homosexuals are a bunch of disgusting perverts and pedophiles. That's who was a victim here are a bunch of just disgusting homosexuals at a gay bar, okay? His cousin said Ron came out to his family just this year. He was afraid they might not accept him, but they did. They embraced his boyfriend as well. He was 22. Christopher Andrew Lee, known as, known as Drew, he was uh, Ron's boyfriend, and his mom says he established the Gay Straight Alliance at his high school. He was 32 years old. You know, I think Orlando, Florida is a little safer tonight. Now that 50, you know, the tragedy is that more of them didn't die. I mean, the tragedy is, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of upset that he didn't finish the job. Well, I begin the book with uh, a short list written by the writer Umberto Eco, where he lists what he thinks are the 14 points of eternal fascism or er fascism, that cult of masculinity. Uh, that war against modernism, that war against truth, that mm -hmm. obsession with apocalyptic violence as a purging agent or cleansing agent, uh, you know, to make the world pure and usher in the utopia. Uh, and I think when you, when you look closely at the ideology of the radical Christian right, those uh, so-called Christians in the United States who want to create a Christian state, in generic terms, uh, they're fascist. Certainly fascism conjures up historical images, as you saw, you know, pictures of Mussolini or Hitler, but it is an ideological belief system. And that's certainly the argument of the book, that this has been a dangerous mutation. These are not traditional evangelicals. They're not traditional fundamentalists who have always called on followers to remove themselves from the contaminants of secular society to shun political power. Evangelical leaders like Billy Graham always talked about not getting too close to power, and he himself was used and burned by Richard Nixon. Mm -hmm. This is a dangerous and radical mutation. It is about creating, in, it, using the iconography and language of Christianity to create an authoritarian, or, or I think arguably a fascist state. Now, We've shown ourselves guilty of one thing, of passionately entering into a conspiracy to uphold the First and Fourteenth Amendments. That was Mario Savio on October 16, 1964, right here on the steps of Sproul Plaza as he stood up against the exact same forces that are perverting his message to instill fascism in the United States. They have perverted the message of free speech and Mario Savio to sell this garbage and ignorant Okay, we're back. That was um, that was good, Aaron. Good job on that. Well, it was fun. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed my um, artistic vomit on YouTube. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, you remember, Mike? I, I, I mean, I, I do remember, Aaron. I, I remember that this was a specific target. Um, and I don't remember how I, I heard this. I probably read an article, maybe in, in Rolling Stone magazine, about how the Republican Party, after they lost to Clinton, you know, wanted to figure out how they were going to. Because Clinton had all the young people at that time, remember? He was playing the sax on Arsenio Hall, and, and he had the young vote, rock the vote on MTV and shit. And so the Republicans were trying to figure out a way to counter that. And they decided they were going to go to the christian coalition they were going to go to the right-wing christian you know <laughs> family <laughs> values I, I mean didn't even i i wasn't it bush quail that was running on family values that was the first bush as i recall well this is so this is what's going on is um this is you know the young republicans which is where carl rove came out of jack abramoff you know the co the college republicans bro the same right, group right. that's bringing Milo and uh, Ann Coulter and all these people to Berkeley these days. Um, direct 
we have the same group, college Republicans. But so they, they come out of sort of the late 70s and, and they're they're these sort of far right wingers who are really repulsed by the whole anti-war movement and all the, the civil rights movement in the 60s. And they're sort of a, a backlash of it. And so Ralph Reed says he sees sort of um, though Pat Robertson failed miserably, he got his ass handed to him in, in his presidential run. What Ralph Reed saw was, wow, there was there, he actually does have a really strong core constituency of people who are really loyal to him. And he thought, if I can co-op that base of people and get them steered towards the Republican Party, and if I can get the Republican Party to shift its gears a little bit to cater to this group, ultimately deciding the um, – the agenda for that group. I mean, you know, they start out by sort of catering to them and then ultimately starts handing down the talking points, which is what happens. So this solidifies it's building under Reagan's administration. But by the time Bush comes along, Bush Jr., like you said, after the Clintons kind of take office, that's when the Republican Party went, hey, man, this whole Christian coalition thing, this Ralph Reed thing going on over here, it at that point really embraced it. And, you know, and Bush Jr., he gets, quote unquote, saved. And all of a sudden he's got this Christian rhetoric in his stump speeches and shit. So he completely embraces the Christian coalition and, and you know, wins based on that core group. And now that core group, that Christian coalition inspired this next generation that's come up that was raised on this sort of soup of, um, you know, like you see where – Pat Robertson talks about in that video. He's like, well, it's a political group with religious ideologies. Well, they were kind of figuring out who they were then. Now they've got it. It's this very libertarian, anarcho-capitalist, Christian fascist manifestation. Like Chris Hedges said, it's not your typical um, evangelical community. This is not the community. That, you know, I remember, bro, when being – Christian didn't mean you were a Republican. There were lots of Christians uh, in yeah, the, maybe. I mean, it changed a lot with the Southern strategy and Nixon, and it became obviously, you know, leaning more towards it. But there was still, I remember there always being in the church when I was a kid, the, the pockets of liberals. There were people who were liberals in my church growing up, dude. Well, my parents were, were, I would call them Reagan Democrats. My mom and dad were both registered Democrats, but I know for a fact they voted for Nixon. I know they voted for um, for Reagan. I used to fight my mom and I talk shit on her all the time about it, <laughs> you know. Um, and I can't tell you, dude, any of my friends that I grew up with that are in the church, um, none of my church friends that I know today, none of them are liberal. All of them are all of them are, are, are Republican. My my relatives that are in the church, they're all Republicans. My it's cousin, like, I love her to death. Is, she doesn't get it, and she's a Republican because her family is Republican. Her dad is a Republican, and I'm like, oh, honey. so Nixon, he, what he did, Nixon puts in the Southern strategy, and he co-ops all, all the far right wing, total racist, hardcore racist people, and then. Ralph Reed and the Christian Coalition comes on 20 years later and adds to that core constituency the far right wing religious nuts. So now that's what the Republican Party is. That's how you get a Donald Trump is you combine these far right wing people who will follow a Pat Robertson and the, and the establishment sort of evangelical line and not question it because it's of God. And then Pat does... Robertson says, OK, if you want to be of God. You gotta support Donald Trump. This but Aaron, Reverend, so talk talk to me as 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 a man of God, bro. <laughs> How can anybody believe anything that comes out of Pat Robertson's mouth now? He talks so much long shit. He blamed the hurricanes on people that were hated on hated on Trump. And it's like, look, dude, his show is on Freeform TV, which is owned by Disney. Get it? I get it. Disney Family Values and that whole nine yards. Really, you need to cut this fucker off, man. I can't believe there's that he's actually got people that follow pastors, him. The pastors in the churches um, are are parroting the Seven Hundred Club line. 
the email chains that that the members of these churches that are set that send each other back and forth is all towing that line. They become these people because they don't want to question things, Michael. That's how you become a follower. And so they're so, so, so susceptible to authoritarian tyranny because they don't want to think for themselves. They want someone to tell them what's right and what's safe and how to get into heaven. Oh, oh, okay. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I just want to please God. What do I do? Well, if you want to please God, you vote for Trump. Oh, and don't believe all that stuff. That's the liberals lying to you. He's not a racist. Because they're afraid they're not going to make it into heaven? Oh, no, because really? they're afraid of people. Bro. They want to be safe right now. They want to be safe right now. They don't want to die. It's not about the afterlife. I think that's but they're a gonna common go thing that they... a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of critics um, will um, say about Christians and stuff is that it's all this um, obsession with the afterlife. I, I, I disagree with that. That's not my experience with the Christian community. They're afraid of their life right now. They want to be safe right now. And they don't want to die. And they don't want the big scary world that they understand because... to them. So if they do right by God, God will protect them and keep them safe because they are his flock. And, um, he because looks he's at coming his... down again the second time? And, and No, because he's, they're his loyal followers today. They will protect him today. You have to understand, dude, that Jesus exists in their life right now. He's a living, breathing creature who speaks to them every day and is protecting them right now. So they do what their church tells them to do to please this Jesus entity that they believe in. Wow. And yes, if yes, it does facilitate it does have the extra added payoff of an eternity in heaven and no hell. But people are afraid for their life right now. It we um we evolved from a primary thalamus driven brain. We began as a fight or flight creature. Now we have our prefrontal cortex that lets us analyze whether we should fight or flight, and it helps us find nuance between those two choices. But that takes a little bit of effort. And lazy people don't want to take effort. They just want to be told whether they're... Exactly. 